The Ink Demon is the overarching antagonist of the Bendy series, and has quite the interesting story. Joey Drew wanted to make his cartoon characters real, so he hired the Gent Corporation to create the Ink Machine, which, using Gent's special ink, would produce living characters. One of the first attempts with the Ink Machine resulted in the creation of the Ink Demon. He was made as an attempt to create Bendy, but he came up strange, and since then they didn't attempt to create Bendy again. Joey Drew ordered that Thomas Connor kept the Ink Demon locked up tight, and they came to the conclusion that the reason the Ink Demon was so strange was because he lacked a human soul. After this, almost all of the Ink Machine's creations used human souls from Joy Drew Studios employees. Eventually, Joy Drew Studios closed, and all the creatures born from the Ink Machine ended up trapped in the cartoon cycle that the Ink Machine had also created. Inside the cycle, the Ink Demon is seemingly invincible, unable to be hurt by normal weapons, and he has immense power. The souls in the cycle either feared or worshipped the Ink Demon. People like Sammy believed he could set them free. Sometime before bending the Ink Machine, it's implied that the Ink Demon attacked Alice Angel, resulting in her deformed face. I will not let the demon touch me again. I am so close now. So almost perfect. In Boris and the Dark Survival, which is being rebranded as Bendy Lone Wolf, the Ink Demon hunts Boris as he searches for supplies across the studio. Later in Bendy and the Ink Machine, the Ink Replica of Henry activates the Ink Machine inside the cycle, which gets the Ink Demon's attention. As Henry is returning to the Ink Machine, the Ink Demon can be heard crawling in the air ducts. When Henry returns to the Ink Machine, he's attacked by the Ink Demon and flees. In Chapter 2, Henry encounters one of the Ink Demon's followers, Sammy Lawrence, who tries to sacrifice Henry to the Ink Demon to appease him. However, the Ink Demon kills Sammy instead. Henry then escapes the ritual, but the Ink Demon cuts his escape short and chases him until Henry can get to safety. Chapter 3 is by far the Ink Demon's biggest appearance in the game. Henry is tasked by Alice Angel to retrieve supplies for her across the studio, and the Ink Demon will appear randomly. If the Ink Demon spots Henry, he'll chase after him, and Henry will have to hide in order to evade him. Later in Chapter 4, when Henry is trying to rescue Boris from Alice Angel, he travels through the vents. Later, Henry is chased by the Projectionist and hides, but the Projectionist seems to notice him. In a pretty surprising twist, the Ink Demon appears and attacks the Projectionist, then quickly decapitates him. The Ink Demon seems to notice Henry hiding, but takes away the Projectionist's body to feast on it. In the final chapter of the game, Henry keeps seeing hidden messages telling him to find something in the film vault, but by the time he gets there, the Ink Demon has already taken it. After searching the film vault, Henry, Allison, and Tom encounter the Ink Demon, but manage to avoid its detection. They then find the Ink Demon's Lair, a giant version of the Ink Machine at the bottom of the studio, a fitting lair for the monster born from the Ink Machine. When Henry goes inside, he finds the Ink Demon's throne, surrounded by projectors playing the Bendy cartoons and an audio log from Joey Drew. It's simply awe-inspiring what one can accomplish with their own hands. A lump of clay can turn to me. If you strangle it with enough enthusiasm, look what we've built. We created life itself, Henry. Not just on a silver screen, but in the hearts of those we entertain with our fancy moving pictures. But when the tickets stopped selling, when the next big thing came along, only the monsters remained. Shadows of the past. But you can save them, Henry. You can peel it all away. You see, there's only one thing Bindi has never known. He was there for his beginning, but he's never seen the end. The end. The Ink Demon's cartoon facade has been pulled away to reveal the demon within, and he becomes Beast Bendy. Beast Bendy tries to charge into Henry as he navigates his way through the machine. Eventually, Henry makes his way back to the Ink Demon's throne, and uses the end reel to kill the Ink Demon. After killing the Ink Demon, Henry is sent to Joy Drew's apartment in the real world. Joey Drew shortly talks to Henry, before sending him back to the beginning of Chapter 1, and the cycle restarts all over again. In the post credit scene of the game, we can see the real-world ink machine in Joey Drew's apartment. 
The next game, Bandy in the Dark Revival, marks a big change for the Ink Demon in a lot of different ways. After the events of Bandy and the Ink Machine, Joey Drew dies, and his old friend Nathan Arch revives the Bandy brand. Nathan collects all of Joey's Bandy stuff from his apartment, including the Ink Machine. Nathan's son Wilson notices the Ink Machine being delivered to Archgate Pictures, and he begins to investigate its secrets. Using the Ink Machine, Wilson enters Joey's cartoon cycle from Bandy and the Ink Machine, and begins tampering with the cycle's events and holding it in place. According to the archives, this resulted in the Ink Demon evolving. He almost entirely loses the Bendy appearance and takes on a much more monstrous form. However, Wilson wants to take over the cycle, and the Ink Demon is the biggest obstacle in his path. Eventually, Wilson manages to capture the Ink Demon, using his creations known as the Keepers. The Keepers attempt to kill the Ink Demon, but aren't able to successfully terminate him. To nullify the Ink Demon's powers, the Keepers transform him into the smaller form of Bendy. Bendy is a personality more like his cartoon appearance and he displays much more emotion than the Ink Demon does. Months later when the events of the game take place, Wilson brings Audrey Drew into the cycle. During some of Audrey's first moments in the cycle, we hear what Wilson has been telling everyone else about the Ink Demon's disappearance. For 211 days, you've lived without the Ink Demon haunting your steps. I banished him away, tore his body in two. Towards the end of the first chapter, Audrey encounters Bendy. She reaches out to hold his hand, but her ink powers zap him, unknowingly freeing the Ink Demon from his prison. When searching around Animation Alley, the Ink Demon introduces himself with a brand new voice. The Ink Demon then pursues Audrey throughout the game. Outside of randomized attacks, the Ink Demon appears a couple of times throughout the story. In Chapter 2 when making her way through Artist's Rest, Audrey encounters the Ink Demon eating a lost one's body. And the Ink Demon slowly pursues her, but luckily she manages to escape. In Chapter 3 when Audrey heads to the elevator, she finds the Ink Demon, but she's able to hide from him. Shortly after, Audrey finds Bendy and follows him into the sewers. Eventually, Audrey makes her way to the city and finds Bendy once again, but this time she gains his trust, and in Chapter 4 they explore the city together. However, Audrey is separated from Bendy, but continues onward to the Gent workshop. Before she can enter, the Ink Demon appears. The Ink Demon goes to attack Audrey, but Wilson's signal towers activate and turn the Ink Demon back into Bendy. Inside the Gent workshop, Audrey finds audio logs relating to the Ink Demon's capture and his transformation into Bendy. In Chapter 5, when Audrey decides to help Wilson kill the Ink Demon, he explains things to her more clearly. You never actually killed the Ink Demon, did you? No, he's too powerful to destroy. So we sealed him away, trapped him in a different form. One that was smaller, harmless. Bendy. It was a fitting prison. Although, he seems to have found a way to free himself. At the end of the game, Wilson reveals his plan to create a new cartoon god for the cycle in order to overthrow the Ink Demon. Isn't he beautiful? Simple, but elegant. A treasure. Powerful beyond anyone. The Ink Demon will fall. And we can have peace. At last, your purpose is revealed, Audrey. This is why you're here. With your soul inside him, my creation will live forever. Audrey manages to fight Wilson off and kill him, but in the process he's turned into Shipahoy Dudley. Shipahoy Dudley nearly kills Audrey, but the Ink Demon appears and fights him. With Wilson dead, the Ink Demon turns his attention back to Audrey.
Audrey and the Ink Demon merge together to form Beast Bendy. Memory Joey appears to help Audrey and gives her the end reel from Bendy and the Ink Machine. The Ink Demon killing Joey Drew gives Audrey the strength to take control of Beast Bendy's body. And in the final act of the game, the player controls Beast Bendy and goes on a rampage. Beast Bendy has an improved model, and unlike in Bendy and Ink Machine, he has fully formed legs. All of Audrey's allies, and even Henry from Bendy and Ink Machine, come to Audrey's rescue. And together they manage to play the end, defeating the Ink Demon once again and resetting the cycle. After the cycle is reset, Audrey returns to the real world, accompanied by Bendy, implying that the Ink Demon has once again been repressed into the Bendy form. So, what's next? Who can really say? Hey, the name is Badnator. I'll be taking you over for Dane in the conclusion. Subscribe to Dane to see his next videos. Making this part two of their own review coming out soon. And a retrospective of Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. And then we uh, play the epic the exit music, Dane, please. Dane, the music's gonna be so cool. Oh wait, no, you don't need music yet. Dang.